Hello, everyone. So I welcome you back to this lecture series on data communication. And uh, in our previous class, we are talking about the uh, error detection and correction algorithms. We have understood what you mean by error and uh, the causes for error, which is because of the interference. And we see that there are two possibilities of error, a single bit error as here, and there is a multiple bit error, it's called burst errors. And to overcome this error, we use what is called as a coding, which actually uses a redundancy concept. It means redundant bits are appended with our data. So it's called as a data word. And when we append it, it becomes a code word. And we see that this is a one-to-one -one mapping. Fine. And this is the basic idea of the error detection. We also, which we discussed. And uh, theoretical analysis using the Hamming code. And one of the algorithm that we discussed is a linear uh, parity check, a linear code parity check algorithm. In this class, we are going to discuss on cyclic redundancy, cyclic redundancy code, or very popularly known as CRC, right? So let us see that how this uh, algorithm is actually working. It. Okay, so this is the basic uh, block diagram of the algorithm. So here we are taking two devices, the sender and a receiver. The basic idea of this code is now you we are generating now this uh, redundant data, not uh, like the earlier we had early, had only one redundant either it is zero or one, which tells what is the parity of the data word. So there are some limitations with that. One is uh, we are not able to uh, detect the even number of errors, whereas odd number of errors we can easily detect. So that is a drawback uh, which we need to overcome and CRC overcome the problem, right? So in, in this, uh, the idea is for a data word, we are going to generate a code word, which is multiple number of bits. We don't use single number of bits as in the parity check. So let's see that how it, this algorithm works. So we are having a data word here, which is made up of four bits. And we give it to the generator algorithm. And there are two inputs to the generator. Algorithm. One is the data word itself. And there is another, which is called as redundant bits. So there are three bits in this case. Four bits are there in the data world. So four minus one, a number of bits we are going to use in the redundant. And that will generate what is called as augmented data. Augmented data. World. Now using the augmented data word, the generator will generate what is called as a reminder. Now this reminder is the redundant information that we are going to append with the data word, okay? So data word is selected to which we are going to augment the redundant bits initializing with zero. And then the generator will generate using this data word a reminder. Now the generator will use a special pattern, which is called divisor. Now both the sender and the, the receiver, okay, is here also called as encoder and decoder, will agree upon this divisor, right? So this is the uh, information that will be agreed between both the parties. <clears throat> now using this divisor, we are going to divide the augmented data, which will result into some reminder. And that reminder will be added 
to our data world, I mean, augmented to the data world to generate our code word. Now, this code word is transmitted through a unreliable, unreliable transmission. Upon receiving this, the data will be sent to the checker. Now, checker will again divide this code word using the divisor and the syndrome will be generated. If the syndrome is a zero, okay, because we have three bits here, three zero, three zero bits, then we are going to accept it. The decision logic will accept it or else we are going to discard. Hope that you get my point. So once they accept, they accept the code word. So the code word will be removed. I mean, the redundant bits will be removed to generate, to obtain our final data. This is how this uh, cyclic redundancy <clears throat> algorithm will work. And we can demonstrate this in three ways. The one demonstration we call it as paper pencil method. The other way that we can demonstrate this is using the polynomial division. A polynomial. The third one is we can implement this as hardware. We can implement it also on the hardware. So this algorithm can be demonstrated in three ways. Okay. To understand this, let us take an example. Okay. We'll take an example. My data word, I'll write this as date W, data word is 1101. Whereas my generator, let's call this as G, which is, I select it as 1011, right? So selection of generator, there are certain characteristics which we will discuss later. Not all the generator or divisor can be used here. Generator, it is means to me, this is the divisor, this one, right? So both the users will be knowing what is the divisor is, okay? So first we will uh, see how it works. So we need to divide this, right? So we have a data word. Now I need to construct the augmented data word. So in the augmented data word, we need to take K minus one number of bits to be augmented with zeros. So there are four bits here. So I'll take three zeros. Okay, I need to, I will be augmenting this data word with three zeros. So this is my augmented data word. And the divisor is this, right? Now let us divide these two, uh, I mean, augmented data word with my divisor. So I'll be using one. And since I'm using a binary operation, I'll be using the modulo two subtraction or addition. So again, I have one at the end, so one, zero, one, one. Okay, for one minute. Okay, now I divided it. Now I'll bring this back. Okay, so first I'll divide and I will get this zero here. Now and again, I have one here, so I'll take one, one, zero, one, one. So this will give me one, one, one. Now I will pull this next zero. Now it, we have one, one, zero, one, one. I'll be having one, zero, and one. Now let us take this zero. So we have zero, and I will be using one, one, zero, one, one. So my result will be zero, zero, one. So this is my reminder. Now the code word that I'm going to generate is, I'll take the data word, right? So here the algorithm says, take the data word and augment with the Reminder. So my reminder is zero, zero, one. So this is my code word. Right? So data, data that I'm going to transmit. Okay. So now let's see what is going to happen. So we'll take first that there is no error. 
there is no error during the transmission. So the code word, I'll call this as CW, which I received is one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, and the divisor of the generator that I'm going to use, or we, we agreed upon, or both the users are agreed upon is one, zero, one, one. Now we are, we are taking the case that there is no error. So we need to divide this code word with my device. So one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Here we have one, zero, one, one. Right, so if I divide it, let us divide this. Zero. This bit, one, one, zero, one. One, 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 one. I'll take this bit. Zero. So one, one, zero, one, one. So one, zero, one. The last bit I need to pull. So this will be one. So one, one, zero, one, one. Right. So the result we obtained is a zero. Okay. Since the syndrome is zero, now this is our syndrome. Okay, since the syndrome is zero, we are going to accept this code word. And so the data word that we are going to accept is one, one, zero, one. So you remove this part from the code word and you can accept it. Fine. Now let us. Take another example. Now, instead of the proper correct code word, we will take the example that there is some error. So code word that I received is one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, right? So the fifth bit is flipped here. Instead of zero, I'm having one. Now, again, the generator we are having here is the divisor we are having is one zero one one. Now let us divide this and see what will happen. One one zero one one zero one one zero one 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 zero one 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 zero. I'll pull this one. One zero one 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 zero. I'll pull this now zero. So I'm gonna have be taking one one one. So I'll be having one one one. I'll take the last bit here. So it is one. So you can see that the remainder is not zero. Instead, it is. Okay, just a minute. The last bit I made a mistake. So sorry. So this is one zero. Now my this this is a syndrome. Now this since this syndrome is not zero, this data word or this code word will be just discarded. We will not be able to get the uh, actual data. So this is how I can or we can demonstrate using the paper pencil. The other method is polynomial. Right. So if I take this data word, take the data word that we have taken, that is one, one, zero, one. So this is at the location x0, x1, x square, and x3. So my polynomial would be x3 plus x square plus one. Okay. Now the divisor we are having is one, zero, one. So for this, I'll get this as x3, x plus 1. Now, we have to construct the augmented data, right? Augmented data. It means we are appending with three zeros. If I put three zeros here, then this is going to be shifted to x6, right? So I will be multiplying this with an x3. I mean, appending that with an x3, uh, augment that with an x3. So this will be x. 6 plus x5 plus 
x3. Correct? So this is what the uh, augmented data world has. we have. Now let us divide the polynomial. Uh, okay, augmented data word polynomial will be divided using the generator. So let us see how it works. So we are having x6 plus x5 plus x3. We need to divide it using x3 plus x plus y. Remember that we are doing the modulo uh, addition. So in that case, both addition and subtraction will be same. So we are having x3. So x6 plus x4 plus x3. So which will give me only x5 plus x4. Now let us do it with x square. So we'll be having x5 plus x cube plus x square. Correct? Now, again, you do the modulation, I'll get mod operation. So I'll be having x4 plus x3 plus x square. Now I need this with x. So I'll be having x4 plus x square plus x, oh, sorry, plus x. And that will give me x3 plus x. Again, I'll be dividing with one. Then I'll get x3 plus x plus one. The result will be just one. The same that what we obtained in our previous example, what we did with the manual. So this is x0 or this I can call it as one, right? So we obtain the same results. So I would uh, uh, like to give you the simple homework. Uh, you demonstrate these two cases, that is with error and without error using the polynomial division approach, okay? Now, let us see that uh, how this algorithm is implemented in hardware. For this, uh, I will be using a simple, uh, just one minute, yeah. So let us uh, use a simple animation and uh, see how it works. So in case of the hardware implementation, we are going to use a simple linear register. So let us first understand that what it is. Okay, so we are going to use, so for this example, we are going to use three shift registers. So if you observe our division, this last bit will not play much role here. Okay, so if you can, you can see that, it's not going to play, that is always going to be removed. The last bits will not play much role. So that will not be utilized. So we are going to use three shift registers for our example. Okay. And we have to do this modulo operation, which takes input here. So there are modulo operations that we are going to do, modulo addition. And the output of the final shift register is given to the input of the first module operation. This is where I'm going to give the data, right? Okay, and the input to these two will be based upon what is my generator. So the generator now we have is 1011, and uh, we see that it is not necessary to use the MSB. We need only just 01. So whenever I connect to this module, we can call this as one. So here I'm again connecting. So I'll call this as one. We are not doing anything. I mean, there is a zero bit. So we are not going to make any connections. Oh, hope you are getting this point. So the modulo addition will have two inputs. One is from the data and uh, the register. The another one is it is based upon your divisor. So if there is one, we are going to connect. If there is zero, there will be no connection. So this is the configuration for our example. So this will be my given augmented data. 
So the data word that we are using here is 1101 one, one, with three zeros argument, right? Okay, so in my example, I have taken a, a small change. Instead of my data word as 1101, one, I assumed it as 1001, fine. And uh, the divisor is going to remain same. Okay, so let me just stop the sharing and take a... it here for time being. Okay. So let us see. So this is my structure, right? So wherever there is one, I am connecting. Wherever there is no uh, zero bit is there, I'm not connecting that. So this is the input to that. This is my initial state where the uh, code that we have to generate is kept to zero. Initially, it is to zero. Now, the first bit appears here, one, right? So now this one and this zero will be modulated. I mean, will be taken the modulo to our XR operation, similarly here. So now when, when we do the operation in my first block, the output at the shift registers, now the new shift register states will be changed. It will be changed to one zero and zero. How? The input to this XR operation is one and zero. So this shift register will be updated with one. Now earlier we have the shift register with zero and the zero value is given here. So that is the reason why I'm getting zero. Similarly, another zero, right? Now my second word will, the second bit will come, that is zero. Okay, now when it takes zero, the zero is here. So we have the shift register with zero. One and zero, I will be having one. Zero and a zero, the shift register is with zero. Now the third <clears throat> bit in this example is zero. Okay, in that case, so zero and zero, uh, XR with zero will give me zero. Zero, zero, zero. One and zero will be one. Now this, the fourth bit that we are taking is one. So one and one. Okay, so fourth bit is taking one. Now let us see what will happen. One and one, the answer is zero. Zero XR one will be one. Zero and zero will be zero, correct? Now we'll continue with our fifth bit. So here again, it is zero. Now let's see what will happen. Zero and zero is zero. Zero XR zero is zero. One XR zero is one. Now another bit will come, zero. So I'm just observe that I'm keeping track of my Ds. Okay, D0, D1, D2, all are being kept track. So D, W is zero and one. So now it should come to as one, zero and one, it will be one, zero and zero, it is zero. And the final bit is zero. That will give me the final answer. Just a minute. Okay, so for this data word, for the data word 1001, my uh, code that we are written in data that I'm going to generate is 011. Okay, so this how we can uh, demonstrate it using the hardware also, it's possible to do with the hardware. Fine, so we have discussed with respect to three parts. One is, One is with the paper pencil method and then with the polynomial method and also the hardware. So students who are interested, uh, I, I also want to give you a small assignment that 
please try this example even for the hardware you will get more insight it will also be a practice right so there are some uh, analysis that we have to make for this algorithm okay so let me take uh, another slide here Stop the sharing. Okay. So some of the points that we have to observe. So it's called CRC analysis. <clears throat> So in this case, we represent it as B of X, that is the data word, and code word is C of X, generator is G of X, syndrome is S of X, and the error which we are going to observe is B of X. So some notation we are using. So in this cyclic coding, if my syndrome is not equal to zero, then the bits are corrected. That is the first observation. And if it is zero, then we have two outcomes. One, the bit might be corrupted, or we have failed to detect that it might happen. So let us see that why this happens. See, the, the idea of this algorithm is, is on the type of the generator we are using. Not all the generator will give you a successful result. Okay, so there are only few set of generators that are very, very popular, like uh, that we use it in CRC 16, CRC 32. There are generator polynomials, which are of primary importance. So that will overcome this problem. So, I mean, we will minimize this, uh, 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 you know, the failure chances. So what to do with, it? how do I can uh, uh, observe about the generator? Okay, in a, the first one is, in a cyclic code, those errors that are divisible by G of X. So if these errors are divisible by G of X, then you cannot catch the, uh, error. So we are going to fail that. So errors should not be divisible by GRX. The second one is, see, we are observed the two kinds of errors, a single bit error and a multi burst or a, sorry, multi bit error and burst errors. So with respect to the single bit errors, so if a generator has more than one time, okay, like, like what we took example of X3 plus X plus one. So there is more than one term. And the coefficient x0 is 1, then we can catch all the single bit errors. It should be more than one uh, term. So single bit error, in the earlier case, if you see, if, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the single bit errors, we are able to detect this uh, single bit errors very easily in the TRC. Okay, the second is if a generator cannot divide. So we have a generator and we are not able to divide a polynomial. Okay, then we can isolate all these, then all the isolated double errors. I mean, isolated mean the one which are very bit far away from each other. They can all be detected. The fourth uh, analysis that we have to make is a generator that contains a factor of X plus one can detect all numbered, uh, all odd numbered, uh, numbered errors. So that is our example, that's x3 plus x plus one. So we have x plus one uh, as a factor and it is all odd number errors can be easily detected. So in our previous example, yes, this is satisfied. This is satisfied. Oh, sorry. And a generator contains a factor, okay, sorry. The, all the burst errors, yes, we have uh, discussed this, all the burst errors with L less than is equal to R will be detected. So R is number of the redundant bits. The length of that error, if it is uh, uh, if it is less than that R, it will be detected. It will be surely detected. But if it is equal to R plus one, more than just one, we are having three as redundant bit. And if it is more than that, plus four, we take it four, it is going to detect with this probability. And if it is greater than that R plus one, the probability will be one minus one by to the power of r. So these are the few uh, points that we need to remember with respect to the CRC algorithm.
So let me start this. Hope you under you are understanding the concept here. Fine. Okay. Let's go back to our notes and uh, take the uh, another algorithm which is also very popular, similar like CRC. This algorithm is also very popular in uh, the internet. So it's called as a Chaksham algorithm. So let us see that what is that algorithm. Okay, so let me take one more sheet. Okay, so let us take one more algorithm, which is similarly no equally popular as of the CRC. It's called checksum algorithm. Right. So let us see what is the uh, block diagram for this algorithm. Okay. So this is the block diagram of this algorithm. So let me take it. So again, this is, there are two nodes. Now, instead of, uh, uh, we work with uh, small blocks, we are taking message now, a complete message. And this message is used by a generator to generate what is called as a checksum. This M bits, redundant bit that we append, they are called as checksum. Now the receiver will receive this checksum and it will find uh, that, whether if, if there are any errors, then we see that this checksum, uh, this checksum, if there are no errors in the received data, and again, if we compute the checksum, if there are no errors, then this checksum will be zero. It says that there are no errors. So if there are errors, then uh, the checksum will be a non-zero. So that's what uh, is happening here. So we are taking this last few m number of bits. We are computing the checksum of the data. If that checksum is zero, then uh, all our data will be accepted, or else it will be just discarded. So let's take an example and uh, uh, see how it works. Okay. So for this, let us assume that our message contains seven, eleven. 12, 0, and 6, right? So the first step of this algorithm is you take the uh, sum in one's complement. You need to take the sum first. Let us, let us add this. So this will be 36, right? So if I add this, this is of 36. Now we need to find a one's complement. So let me write that in terms of bits, 0, 1, 1, 1. One, 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 zero, zero, eight plus four. Sorry, here I made a mistake. So eight, four, two, one, eight, four, two, one, eight, four, zero, zero. This is zero, 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 zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, right? So if I take the 36, 32, 4, 2, 1, correct? Now, how do we do the ones count? In the ones for the ones complement sum, you take this 1, 0, append it here and add it. So you'll get 0, 1, 1, 0. So my one's complement value will be six, zero, one, one, zero. Now the final value is to compute the checksum. Take the complement of this. So take the complement of this. So when I take the complement, my final checksum value will be nine. So that is because the complement of zero, one, one, zero is one, zero, zero, one. So this is the data that I'm going to transmit. With, that is a checksum. So what is my code word? 7, 11, 12, 0, 6, and 9. Okay. 
So we will assume that there is no error that is detected. Now let us see what is going to happen. So if I add this, I will get this as 45, right? So the 45 value will be 32. Oh, just a minute. Yeah, the 45 value will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. So what I need to do is take this last two bits, bring it here. So my sum 1's complement will be 1, 1. So the data that I have generated now is 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is 15, right? Fine. So now you, the 1, 1, 1 is what we are having. Now you need to take the complement. If I take the complement, my result will be 0, 0. Now what the algorithm says is this M bit, what we have generated now for our example with no errors is 0, 0. Since it is 0, I'm going to accept. I'm, we are going to accept this data. So this is my message that will be accepted, right? So let us uh, take with another example, right? Instead of receiving a correct data, what has happened is we have received a error data. So let us take this six is just changed to five. So this will be my 44, right? So then my answer will be zero. 32 to 40, 44, 0, 0. So I'll take this 1, 0 and append it here to obtain my one's complement sum. So this is my 8 plus 4, 12, 14. So this will be my answer 14, which is having 1, 1, 1, 0. And if I take the complement of it, we are not getting zero instead we are getting one so all are zeros here no they are not zero so we are going to discard it okay so this is the another uh, algorithm which is called as checksum algorithm so in this class we have discussed two uh, very popular algorithms in internet that is the crc algorithm and the checksum algorithm and uh, the crc algorithm uh, we demonstrated using three uh, methods, the pen, pencil, paper method, uh, sorry, pencil and paper method, or you can take it as pen, paper method, the polynomial division approach and the hardware approach. And the another one example is the checksum algorithm, uh, which is also a very interesting algorithm uh, that you will come across in your uh, further courses also. You will uh, see uh, very beautiful algorithms uh, with respect to this in, in, in the higher courses of computer networks. Okay, uh, so this ends our uh, uh, module three. Uh, I mean, sorry, about the error uh, detection method. Uh, so in the error correction method, uh, the, the steps, uh, the algorithm that we are, uh, you know, just touching upon is called as uh, forward error correction method. And uh, uh, we will discuss that in our next video along with uh, some of the examples of this chapter. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for uh, being with me. Thank you.